The mix node can be the most confusing node to work with, but I'm gonna show you why it can be the most powerful node you can use in any shader. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to harness the power of the first nine functions in your shaders. And in this tutorial, I'll be going over the last 10. But before that, welcome to the Comfy Mug. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that it's quick and easy to learn for you. If you wanna make your 3D textures and models resemble your favorite anime styles, then you've come to the right place. So subscribe with notifications so you don't miss out on any future tips or secrets. And if you wanna support me and get some anime assets in return, check out my Patreon in the description. Real quick, I just wanna say thank you so much to my founding patrons, you guys are the reason why I could continue making these videos in the first place, and you will always hold a special place in my heart. As always, feel free to use the chapters to find which function you're looking for, or watch the whole video and gain a better understanding of all the ways you can use the mixed color node. Also, the project file for this video is linked in the description, so check it out if you want to follow along. Now, the soft and linear light functions share similar names, but they can accomplish radically different things. Taking the soft light first, we have a gradient and Voronoi texture plugged into our A and B inputs respectively, with certain additions to really illustrate their strengths. If we turn the factor all the way up, our Voronoi texture will become visible in the gray areas of the gradient. But it isn't visible in the areas of the gradient where the value is either 1 or 0. This is still true if we change the color of the gradient and the Voronoi. And something important to note is that each color on the color wheel has its own native value value in addition to the value attributed to it in the settings. So depending on what colors you pick for your textures, there may be a difference in where the textures shine through or not. I personally colorize my textures with the mix function after I've made a full texture in black and white, however, and just use the soft light to emphasize certain light and dark values instead. But you can use it to come up with some really interesting results. The linear light is one of the best functions I could recommend because of its particular utility in making textures look more organic or rugged. A good way to show this is once again with a Voronoi and gradient texture. But this time, the Voronoi is plugged into the A input and the gradient into the B. Now, if we look at the Voronoi on its own, it's just a bunch of randomly placed polygons with various distributed value levels. And taking a look at the gradient, it's a simple black and white texture that gradually transitions from a value of 0 to 1 on a perfect line. But if we plug them both together and increase the factor of our linear light, all of a sudden our Voronoi is affected by the gradient, being turned into a gradient of its own, yet with a more distorted line. Increasing the scale of the Voronoi can give you this granular sort of texture that looks kind of like stipple art or grainy film. You can also use this function to merge and transform textures with each other. I use this all the time in my own shaders, and again, can't recommend this enough. But moving on to the next couple functions, we have the difference and exclusion functions. These are the first ones that deal in turning colors to their opposites, but they're the only ones that can simultaneously show their original colors. But in order for this to work, we'll want a black and white texture to be plugged into the A input, and either a solid color or a colorized texture into the B input. Slowly increasing the factor, we'll see first our original color in the black areas of our A texture, but when we increase the factor more, our opposite color will be revealed on the white areas. And anywhere the texture is gray, there will be this harsh clash. Surprisingly, this clashing color isn't a mix of both the original and opposite colors as they transition. If that were the case, in the example with the blue and yellow, it would have been green in the middle. But it seems the original color instead gets darker and more saturated. I'm not quite sure why this happens, but if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn more about this. Now, we can change the white in our black and white texture to a different color if we want, and those specific areas will respond. Trying to do this with the black areas doesn't work exactly, but if you want two wildly different colors, you can change the black stop to white and adjust the hue and saturation however you'd like to get some cool results. The one difference between the difference and exclusion functions is that the exclusion function doesn't have that harsh, more saturated effect in the gray areas, but instead has a much smoother transition. 
that still doesn't blend the two colors together. I, I have no idea what's going on. Now, the subtraction function is pretty interesting. It focuses on subtracting the values of a color and turning that color to its opposite only, with an almost burnt look in any gray area. Set up much like the previous function, with a black and white texture in the A input and a solid or textured color in the B, the greater the factor you have, the harsher the saturation and burn in the middle. If you change the white stop to another color, you'll lose the effect that turns the base color to its opposite, but you'll also gain an additional boost to its color's saturation. Almost as if you're adding the saturation of the B input color to that of the A input. So if you want some super saturation, that's the way to do it. The divide function can do everything the subtraction function can do, but brighter. <laughs> I'm not even using an emission shader for this. The divide is doing all the work. If you lower the value of the white stop in the A texture, you're basically just turning down the emission. But changing the color instead will make it look like you're at an EDM festival or something. I don't know, I've never been to one. But seriously though, you guys can get some really cool effects with this function. I'm imagining some sort of Naruto energy ball or something. Now we get on to some of the most straightforward functions, starting with the hue function. With a color in the A input and a different color in the B, you can increase the factor to transfer only the hue of the B color to the A. The saturation and value won't be affected at all. So if you want a slider in one of your shaders that can change one color to a specific other color, then this function is really good for that. The saturation node does exactly what you might think. It transfers the saturation from the B color to the A color. To prove it to you this power is possible, in the A input I have a nearly solid white color with a saturation of 0.001 aimed toward blue, and in the B input I have a fully saturated orange color. And just by turning up the factor, our almost completely desaturated blue becomes the richest blue I've ever seen. This works with any kind of texture too. And you can even change the amount of saturation in specific areas if you plug a colorized texture into the B input with varying levels of saturation. The color function does everything the previous two functions could do all at once. It changes the hue and saturation of whatever is plugged into the A input to what is plugged into the B input. The only thing it can't do is influence the value of a color, but I think you know what can. That's right, the value function. Why did I just sound like Dora the Explorer? The last function on our list has the ability to raise any texture or color's value to the value of the color or texture in the B input. Having a solid color in the B input will turn any texture in the A input to a consistently valued color. But switching the inputs, we can distort the values of any otherwise originally solid color, making the value function rather useful when you want direct control over a shader's contrast. And with that, we've wrapped up the last 10 functions of the mix color node, an incredibly useful node that holds every shader together. But there are plenty more nodes out there, each of which hold great value when constructing your own shaders. And I can't wait to tell you about them. So remember to like the video and subscribe with notifications so you don't miss out. Let me know which function you never knew about in the comment section below. And check out my Patreon if you want to support me and get some pre-made anime assets in return. A special thank you to my patrons as they are the reason why I'm able to make these tutorials free on YouTube in the first place. And from my heart to yours, thank you guys for supporting me and giving me this opportunity to work on a long time dream of mine. And thank you for watching the video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.